finally, I got an email from Tessup, a tracking number, and a parcel. I'm Oz, the Sustainable Orange. It's October 2022. Let's look at what I received and give you a project update. The story here is that I ordered my Tessup Atlas IV wind turbine kit back in March of this year. So whilst I received my wind turbine and charge controller back in June, the inverter has been MIA, I'm told due to chip shortages. I ordered a 5 kilowatt Delta unit that is supposed to have a very low startup voltage, making a good match for wind turbines. Now the only other change to the turbine has been a cap that I 3D printed to avoid water ingress to the spindle. Before I started I took a whole load of measurements of the top of the spindle. Then I dived into Tinkercad 3D, which is a free online 3D modelling app for 3D printing, and I sent the completed file to my printer. I added a couple of rubber o-rings to help seal it, and then I pressed it into the top of the spindle. Okay, looking at the inverter, we have the main on-off switch, two DC strings of DC input, the Wi-Fi antenna, reset switch, and status LEDs, and the AC output with the grounding pin. I started wiring this up with some 2.5mm twin and earth to the AC output, and some DC cabling, which are standard crimp and click terminals you commonly see on solar PV panels. To put it all together, you can see I'm starting out with an 18mm thick sheet of structural ply. This is because I'm mounting it to the wall of the workshop and it needs to hold about 40 kilos of weight. I'm working down low because the ply will be mounted high up, so I'm trying to get all the gear at about chest height. First I mounted the wiring enclosure. I'll be adding a DIN rail to hold the export meter and 100 amp fuse. I'll adjust this to be more appropriate once I'm familiar with what the output is. I will also be mounting all the hot items above it so the heat can easily flow up and out. These are the charge controller with the dump load and the Delta 5 kilowatt inverter. Let's take a closer look at that. Next I'm adding some cable sheath to protect the DC cables and soldering on some terminals to connect them to the bus bars. I'm also adding an isolator switch that will allow me to disconnect the whole system from the house should I need to. The three-phase AC cable from the wind turbine will come in to the left-hand side of this board to the TESUP charge controller. And 240 AC ready for the house will come out to the isolator switch on the right. On the left-hand side under the TESUP charge controller I've added my inline energy meter. This will show me the DC output voltage and current from the wind turbine to the bus bars. Correct grounding is really important. So I'll be adding a dedicated earthing rod as I'm on a TT system here. Don't worry, we're nearly done. A small amount of cable management later and we're ready to mount the board. First we need an idea of height and to throw in some extra bracing. A couple of small bits of 2x4 should do the job. Then a quick placement test of the board. There was a screw catch in the upright so I had to cut a small piece of it out to clear it. So here's the final install on the wall. Let's pause it here and explain what we have. Input from the turbine, which is three phase, goes to the charge controller. That outputs DC to the bus bars via an energy monitor. The bus bars output to the inverter. The inverter then outputs 240 volt AC to the export meter, then to the house via the breaker and the isolator switch. Before we end, there's a few things I need to mention. Firstly, I dug a hole. This is for the concrete foundation of the turbine tower. Secondly, I purchased a weather station and started collecting data about wind speed. This is actually really useful to try and work out how effective the turbine will be for my specific application. The height of the monitoring station is about 5.5 metres, about 2.5 metres below the height the turbine will be and below the house roof level. September's data shows an average wind speed of about 3 metres per second. This is right where the Atlas IV should start generating. In September, we also saw peak gust speeds of up to 9.2 meters per second, which looking at the spec sheet should be good for about two kilowatts peak power. 
Looking at October's numbers next, and we see the average wind speed has picked up dramatically, with an average up about 33% to 4 meters per second, and peak wind speeds hitting 11.2 meters per second. Checking the spec sheet again means we should see an average of about 600 to 800 watts, with peaks of up to 3.5 kilowatts. I would be very happy with that. Remember this is way below the level the wind turbine would be mounted at, so we should have more gains with clear airflow. The final parts left are the concrete base and the tower. I plan on using F34 truss for the tower consisting of two 4 meter sections with a hinged base. I can't wait to get this up and running. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this update and ensure that you're subscribed to get more as the project progresses. If you're new here, this is the fifth video in the wind turbine project series. Please go and check out the other videos where I talk about the project's design and I build the wind turbine kit. Please remember nothing you see here should be taken as formal advice. I'm providing this information as an enthusiast and not as a professional. If you think I missed anything or have any questions, drop a comment and hopefully the next update won't take three months.